Hey everybody. I hope you I hope we didn't throw you for a loop today by uh by coming on an hour late. I hope I didn't uh screw up your Monday schedule, but I had a I had a presentation to do uh with Orvis UK earlier in the day and I wanted to have time to to set up my uh my stuff. So or here we are at four o'clock instead of three. Um, and who's here? I don't see anybody. No comments. Do I have the comments? Do I have the comments turned on? Yeah, I do. And nobody's here. Maybe I'm going to do this all by myself and nobody's going to tie with me today. Oh, there's Ken. And there's Roger. Roger Martin. Good afternoon. Almost good evening. And Fishane. Oh, there we go. There's people coming in. Okay. Yeah, now we got a crew. I guess it took a while for uh, for the comments to register. So we're going to tie a beetle today. And I think, I think this is the first time I've tied one of my own patterns on this Facebook Live. I like to tie patterns that um, that you can buy from Orvis so that if you if you don't tie or you want to get a sample, uh, you can get a sample. And this this is actually one that that Orvis sells, or at least Orvis used to. I don't know if we still do, but um, it's um, it's not that innovative of a pattern. It's just as many of, of my own patterns are. It's a it's just a modification and a a, a variation of of something I've done that that makes it easier for me um, to fish and, and to see. So um, it, it is a good beetle pattern. It's a reliable beetle pattern. And um, I rely heavily on beetles and, and not just during the summer. Uh, you know, there are beetles get active as soon as um, as soon as the aquatic insects start to get active, as soon as it warms up a little bit, um, beetles get active. And they're one of the first insects that, you, that you'll find buzzing around. And they do fly. And not only do they fall into trout streams, but they fly into trout streams. They, they're kind of clumsy flyers and they make mistakes and they fall in the water. Um, so um, trout love them. Trout, trout really like beetles, I think, because as with most terrestrials, they float low in the film so the fish can see them well. And also um, uh, they can't get away. They're not going to fly away. Once they, once they hit the water, they're done. Uh, they're not going to get out unless they crawled it somehow crawl along a piece of uh, aquatic weed or something to shore and then dry their wings. But when, once they fall in the water, they're goners. They're going to either get eaten or drowned. So um, trout seem to sense this, and maybe they like the taste of beetles, I don't know, or certain beetles. But they do eat beetles. They eat a lot of them. And it's a real go-to pattern for me. If I've got a difficult fish rising, <clears throat> for instance, and I know it's feeding on caddisflies, and... I can't catch it and I switch flies and I, I try a bunch of caddis flies and emergers and I can't catch it. Often uh, I'll try a beetle and usually get about one shot. Um, the fish, the fish will, uh, you plop that beetle in front of them and the fish will either come over and inhale the beetle quickly, or they'll at least come and take a look at it. And, um, once you have that first shot though, if they come and take a look at it and they don't eat it, you might as well go back to fiddling with caddis patterns because they, they won't come back to it again. Um, it's like, it's almost like a streamer, but it's kind of a good, um, it's kind of a good attractor pattern. And, um, I, you know, I rely on beetles more than I do on ants or even grasshoppers. Cause I think that, um, they're more useful. I think that fish eat beetles more than they do ants or grasshoppers, even during grasshopper season, a fish will eat a beetle. So, um, it's a, it's a great pattern. I, I see a question here for when fishing terrestrials, which bank is best to fish upwind or downwind and actually pro skipper. Uh, it doesn't matter much. Uh, you know, people, people tend to just fish terrestrials along the bank, but, um, what happens is when, when something falls into the water, if you watch it, um, because of the physics of, of flowing water, uh, stuff gets drawn into the center of the river and then goes down that central thread of the river. So, um, you know, you, you can fish a fetal, uh, <laughs> you can fish a beetle on, on the windward bank or the leeward bank, or you can fish a beetle in the middle of the river. 
um, they may it may all work. It's depending where the depends on where the fish are, really. Uh, but don't be afraid to throw terrestrials in the middle of the river because uh, they do get drawn drawn out there into the into the current flow. So um, yeah, and um, you know you can use beetles all the time. Usually they work better after say ten or eleven in the morning because uh, a lot of times those terrestrial insects are are not very active until the sun warms them up or until the air temperatures get up there. Um, but, but once that happens, they get active and, um, and it's just a good, it's just a good general fly to use. Now, most beetle patterns are difficult to see because by nature they, they're dark, most of them, and they float low in the surface film. Um, and so, um, this is, uh, uh, the beetle we're going to tie today. And um, you can see it's dark and it, it floats low in the surface film, but it also has a nice bright orange um, indicator on top of it that that sticks up. Um, you know that you you see beetles and, and ants with a little little orange dot on the back that's painted on them. And uh, the problem with that is unless you're really close or directly overhead of the fly, you can't see that orange dot. So I like something that sticks up a little. I don't like a big parachute, uh, a big high parachute on a beetle because that, that probably looks unnatural. But if you make it make it so that it so that it's not too high, but nice and wide, um, I, think it, I think it helps you uh, keep track of your beetle. And um, the reason I tie this beetle the way I do with a parachute hackle and glow bug yarn is uh, glow bug or, or egg yarn is that the egg yarn uh, compresses and ties in very easily, but then when you clip it, it spreads out. And not only does that give you a bigger, uh, bigger dot to follow, but it sticks up a little bit. And it also keeps the parachute hackle from slipping off because when that, when that yarn separates, the parachute hackle can't come up over the top of it. And um, I like the parachute hackle because, um, you know, I use foam beetles with little uh, yellow foam tabs on them, which sometimes helps. But I find that half the time those land upside down. And I don't think it's, I don't think the beetles uh, work as well when the indicator is, is facing the fish because it doesn't look natural. Uh, but with the parachute hackle, it always lands right side up. And, um, you know, you like to, you like to um, plop beetles in the water, but you don't want too much of a plop. And, and this thing still has some mass to it. So it does make a, a gentle plop with the parachute hackle, um, but not, but it doesn't slam down on the water really hard. And I think it gives you just the right amount of, of plop to, um, attractive fish. That's a technical, plop is a technical term, by the way, in, in fly fishing that all of you should know. Um, so anyway, yeah, the pain is pretty worthless, Jacob. I agree. Uh, okay. Yeah, we got a lot of spammers today. I don't know, but uh, Julia's Julie is there blocking them left and right. She's, I can see her. I can see her going at it. She's, she's blocking those spammers. We'll, we'll keep them out of here. Um, yeah, Julia's back. By the way, I know that you guys missed Julia, and and Julia's back. She'll, she'll come on a little bit later, probably when, uh, when you start asking questions while I'm, uh, while I'm tying. So um, anyway, why a beetle over an ant, Sean? Well, Sean. Uh, because uh, you can, I think you can use a bigger beetle because beetles are generally bigger than ants, and I can I can see a beetle better. Um, I don't know, an ant would be just as good, but um, you have to t usually you have to tie ants in a little bit smaller size to be realistic, and uh, except for the Chernobyl ant, of course, which isn't really an ant. Um, but um, I can get away with a bigger fly, bigger fly, bigger indicator on top. Um, better, better hooking with a little bit bigger fly. So I just like them. I think a, a fish that'll eat an ant's going to eat a beetle. They're not going to be selective over ants or beetles unless there's a flying ant uh, hatch uh, and there's flying ants on the water. That's a different story. Then the fish get quite selective to ants. But if it's just a kind of a day-to-day -day 
stuff falling in the river, a beetle's as good as an ant's, as good as an inchworm, and, and so on, in my opinion anyways, um, in my biased opinion. So sunken ants are great. Yes, Jacob, sunken ants, a sinking ant, a hard-bodied ant is great. And, you know, a really good combination would be to use this beetle as a, uh, as a dry and then tie a sunken ant as a dropper. Then you're going to really crush them. Oh, we got more spammers. Wow. They're just flying in there. Julia's on it. Um, Tom, do you like a deer or ant? Now... I don't, I, I, I use, I tied them before, but um, I, I don't tie them anymore. They're hard to see. They, they fall apart. Um, if I'm going to tie an ant, I usually like to use a fur ant, a fur ant with a little parachute post, similar to the way I tie this beetle, actually. Um, you want to do, you, you really need to have some sort of indicator on, either ants or beetles because they're small and dark and they're tough to see. And if you can't see your fly, you don't know if you're putting it in the right place. You know, you can usually, if you can't see your fly, you can usually see the fish take it because you see the rise. Um, but um, if, if you can't see your fly, you can't see whether it's dragging. You can't see if you're putting it in exactly the right place. So it is really good to have some sort of indicator on your, um, on your terrestrial imitation one way or the other. All right, shall we tie? Uh, certainly you can ask questions as I'm tying. Julia will, will uh, read them off to me. But uh, here's what the fly looks like. Who's tying along? Who's tying along? Are you going to tie along with me? It's not, it's not a terribly difficult uh, fly. Uh, Pro Skipper, no, I don't varnish the back of the foam. Um, the trout can't see the back of the foam. And foam is waterproof anyways, so you don't need to, I don't know what the, what the purpose of varnishing it would be. Um, it may be just for your own aesthetic uh, purposes, but it's, it's not going to make the fly uh, any more effective, I don't believe. Sean's tying. Good, good for you, Sean. Uh, yes, you could. Uh, yes, Jacob, you could throw a small uh, Dorsey yarn indicator in front of a beetle. Absolutely, but um, if you tie if you tie in this way, you don't need that Dorsey yarn indicator because you got it. You got it on top of the fly. All right, so let's start. Um, I am using a standard dry fly hook, size fourteen, standard down eye hook. I like a down eye because it helps me uh, whip finish underneath the head of the beetle. I typically like a ring eye hook, but uh, for this fly, for parachutes, I do like a down eye hook. So it's a size 14 standard dry. Yes, you have to debarb it, but that's okay. It's not that hard to debarb a hook. And also for this fly, I like to use, uh, if you watch me a lot, you know I like to use uh, 8 0 and 12 0 thread a lot. Uh, for this fly, I like to use 6 0. Um, <clears throat> it, it helps make the parachute post uh, easier. Uh, easier to, it helps to post the parachute. And there's no, there's no problem with bulk on this fly. You actually want some bulk. So I'm going to use 6 0 black thread. I'm going to start my thread up by the eye. And then I'm going to cover the shank with thread. It helps keep the foam from slipping off. And then I'm going to come back to where I started. And now I'm going to cut myself a piece of foam. And this is the Orvis uh, flat tying foam, which, which I think is the perfect uh, size for beetles. And I'm going to Cut, I'm going to cut a piece of it that's about a hook gap in width. And I can estimate this pretty good because I've tied a lot of size 14 beetles. I don't have to, but you can hold it up to the hook, about a hook gap. That's good enough. So I've got my piece of foam. 
And then I'm going to square off the end and cut a taper on it. Makes it easier to tie in. And it starts the body with a little bit of a little bit of a taper. So I've got a little point on the end there. And then I'm going to put that point right where my thread is and catch the point. That's why it makes it really easy when you do it that way. And then uh, pull on the foam and wind back. Pull it a little bit towards you. And I like to kind of, you can even um, kind of work your way back in spirals and then come back and catch the foam nice and tight. The foam tends to roll on these flies, so you really want to, you really want to, and make sure it goes all the way to the bend. I didn't go quite back far enough, so I'm going to make another, another turn there. And yeah, maybe I'll go a little farther. That's probably that's probably good enough. And just leave that sitting there. And then horror of horrors. I'm gonna use super glue on this. I'm gonna put some super glue on the body because this tends the stuff tends to roll. Oh, my super glue is stuck there. Oh, too much. That's going to get me in trouble. I'm going to blot that. Tom, God, I should. Well, oh, while you're while you're gluing, do you want to answer some questions? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, we had one from the start that was at, I don't think you asked this, but someone. Oh, Edward asked if these are effective on a uh, pond bluegill. Yeah, these would be great for bluegill. Absolutely. Great. And yep, then uh, Ken asked if you can use real peacock curl. Yep, sure. Cool. Absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I do sometimes. It's not as durable, but it looks really good. Yeah, you could definitely use peacock curl on this for the body instead of uh, instead of uh, ice dubbing. So, yep. And uh, Stephen was asking actually a more general question about like being a beginner in fly tying. Um, mm hmm and so, Stephen, I'll put a link to our um, learning center, which will be really helpful in giving you everything you need to start tying. And also, you can start watching these every week, and there's a whole archive of them. Um, and then, do, do, do. Okay. Uh, oh, Nancy's asking, if your hook has been debarbed, is there a fix to allow the fly to be used in a, hop a hopper dropper scenario that will prevent the dropper from sliding off the hopper hook? Um, don't, don't pinch the barb completely, leave a little bump there and it'll, it'll, you know, it'll still be, uh, almost barbless. Uh, you know, just kind of round the barb down very carefully. Um, or you could just, you know, I, I fish, I fish hopper droppers on barbless hooks all the time and it does, it doesn't slide off that often. It's pretty rare. So, um, I don't worry too much about it. Um, and Bill asked that he he kind of missed it when you were cutting the foam. Um, but how how wide do you cut it? And he asked about a hook about a hook gap wide. Yep, great. Uh, and Roger was clarifying UV glue that you used. Right? No, no, not a, UV. Just super glue. UV super glue would be would be too thick unless you have really thin UV glue. You could use regular head cement too. Okay, awesome. All right, that's it for now. Okay. So now I'm going to take some uh, peacock colored ice dubbing and you could, this could be any color you want. Could be any kind of dubbing, could be peacock curl as, as somebody suggested. Um, I like ice dubbing, it's durable and it has a nice iridescence to it. And I'm just gonna um, dub that on my hook.
start with a little bit of a taper. This peacock version of the ice dub is a little bit more difficult to dub. It's got a lot of uh, tinsel in it. You might even you might even want to put some wax on the thread before you you dub this. And I'm going to just thin that out a little bit by pulling on it. So I have a little start. And then you want the, the body fairly robust. Actually, I'm going to go to the other camera because throw the other camera on there because you can't see that. You want that body fairly robust. So you want to put maybe a couple of layers in the middle of it. And then you want it to taper at the other end too because um, you do want some dubbing over the spot where you tie down the foam. It helps it, uh, it helps it stay in place, but you don't want it too thick. So now I'm gonna wind my dubbing, I'm gonna wet it a little bit and spin it a little bit more. And then hold on to that foam as you wind it, just, and I've got way too much dubbing on there. Way, I don't know what was I thinking. I'm gonna pluck some off, reattach it, and then go up right about to the head, almost to the head, and then come back a little bit. So there's your body. Any questions at this point? No. Um. Do, do, nope. Uh, oh, here okay. we go. We just we just got one. Um, Mike is asking, how about using black deer or elk hair for the body? Um, spun deer hair. Yeah, I guess. I he didn't. He didn't clarify, but yeah. Yeah. Um, you could. Yeah. Good. That's the only question right now. Someone was asking about your next tie off with uh, Tim. So I put the date in the comments. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. And now you're just going to pull your foam over the top. Make sure that it's centered. And then just come straight up with your thread. And pull straight down while you push down on the top of the foam. And that will pretty much center it. So now you got your beetle body there. And depending on how much room, I like to I like to grab a little bit more of the foam because I need to build a little waste there, just a bit of a waste. W A I S T um, so that I can tie my parachute wing in there so just a little bit of overlap and then you can probably now is a good time to trim that trim that head and i can't get in here because of the camera i like to do it right about over the hook eye like so now you've got your little head and you can kind of round the edges of that Make it look more like a beetle's head. This is totally, totally for you and not the fish. They don't care. Oh, that head is uneven. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Good thing I'm not tying against Flagler today. I'd get points off for that. So there's your beetle part. And you could fish it. You could fish this right now as it is, and it would it would work pretty well. But you couldn't see it that well. So we're going to take some egg yarn, and you can use a standard egg yarn or McFly foam, whichever you wish. But you do want you you do for this pattern. You do want to use egg yarn instead of uh, instead of parapost or EP5 or something like that. 
because it's going to compress and then it's going to spring out. So that looks like a lot of yarn for a post. And not only are we going to use all that yarn, but we're going to double it over like so. And after you double it over, so you've got a loop, a loop of yarn, you want to even off the ends, makes it easier to tie in. And it doesn't really matter how long this is because you're going to trim it in the end. Try to get that a little more even there. So now I've got my looped yarn and I'm going to tie that in. I'll spin my thread counterclockwise so it'll jump back over that and just grab the very end of that yarn and cinch it down. All right, we got another, another question. Okay. Jacob's asking if you can use polypropylene yarn instead. Yeah, you're not gonna get the same effect. It's not gonna spread out um, and it's not gonna give you as big of an indicator uh, as the egg yarn. And that's why I use egg yarn in this pattern, but you could certainly, certainly use polypropylene. Hmm. It's just not as good for this pattern. And then I'm gonna trim, I'm gonna trim a little bit of that yarn off there. I'm gonna cover this up with dubbing anyway, but we're just gonna clean it up a little bit so it doesn't show. Again, the fish aren't gonna see this, it doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna take, just take a couple turns in back of the yarn to kind of help raise it up. So you got this big, huge, I'm gonna show it to you. Got this big, huge ball of yarn up there. And then post it. So bring your thread around the base. And you can you can go up the base. Pretty uh, oops. Pretty loosely. And then it's easier to go loosely and then come down a little bit more consistent turns. And I'm just th throwing that thread around the base of the yarn. Tom, Ken's asking if you could add on some rubber legs at this point. No. Or in general? Absolutely not. <laughs> Never. No, yeah, you could, but it's going to make it a pain to... I mean, you get you're gonna have legs anyways. You got you got the parachute hackle for the legs. Um, yeah, you could if you want to put rubber legs on it. You could, but I wouldn't. Okay. But you certainly you could do anything. <laughs> you could you could you know put sparkles on it if you want. Um, and I think you already answered this, but what what in general what sizes do you like for beetles? 12, 14, 16? Uh, 14 and 16 is what I usually use. I'll tie these as, yeah, that's a good question. I'll tie these as small as an 18. Okay. Um, and then we're going to take a black saddle hackle. And boy, if you find a good black saddle hackle for tying terrestrials, buy it Tom, because. Tom, your screen's black. Oh. Can't see you. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to. I, there you are. I press camera four instead, and I don't have a camera four. <laughs> camera one, camera two. So, anyways, a uh, black saddle hackle that's going to be about one and a half hook gaps in length. Uh, I'm trying to find one here that's a little bit longer. Uh, I think that looks good. Let me just check that. Yeah, it's good. So I've got a long saddle hackle here. I can get like four flies out of this. I'll start right at the bottom. And first of all, strip. 
strip fibers away. And then a Tim Flagler trick that I really like. Um, put this over something white so you can see it better. There. Um, you want to hold the hackle so that you're looking at the shiny side. And on the far side, strip a few, uh, uh, just a little bit more hackle off so that when you take your first wind in a clockwise manner, it's going to go against bare stem. That's something I learned from Tim Flagler. I'll show you that a little bit more in a close-up. So here's, here's what it looks like in a close-up. And then lay that hackle against there so that you're going to start with a little bit of bare stem above that point and start tying in against the shank and then raise everything up and again post i'm going to cut that hackle so that i don't and then post it up the wing and then go back down take a couple of turns cut your hackle stem off and then um i take a little you don't have to do this but i'm going to take a little more dubbing and cover up those wraps just a pinch of that same dubbing You don't have to. Often I'll just leave it black thread. I don't think it matters, but I will put a little more dubbing on there. And cover that up like so. And then take a turn of thread again around the base and leave your bobbin hanging on the near side. So now you got your, your upright wing. And... I'm going to switch glasses here so I can see this. And then take your hackle and manipulate it until it, it starts. You may have to twist it a little bit and turn it and back it off so that it starts wrapping shiny side down and that bare stem goes against the... It's not working right. Sometimes you have to really force it. Sometimes you back it off and then come back around. It doesn't want to go for me. It doesn't want to hey, do Tom, it. There's some chatter yeah. in the comments. Um, could you uh -huh. explain what parachute hackle is? Yes, it's what I'm doing right now. It's okay, that's, parachute, yeah. parachute hackle is winding hackle around a, a base of a of a post that you make out of yarn or feathers or something, hair sometimes. This is a parachute base that I'm pulling on. The parachute hackle, you'll see what happens. If I can ever get this, boy, this hackle will not behave. All the practice ones I tied behave perfectly. And this one is not gonna go for me. Boy, it's really annoying. There we go. Now it started. And you're just going to wind that gradually down that base around the post. And you just hold on to the post. I like to wind these with my fingers instead of with the hackle pliers. I think it makes it easier. And then when you get enough hackle, so you're at the bottom, carefully take your tying thread and sneak it under the parachute wraps and around the body, pull it tight so that you've attached, if you've, you've tied that hackle tip to the base. And then carefully come in with a point of your scissors 
and knock that tip off. So now that's parachute hackle. So you can see it's um, oriented horizontally instead of vertically as you typically would some hackle. And oh, to finish. Uh, yeah. Tom, specifically around that, Jacob's asking when that happens, are there any tips on setting your hackle at uh, at tie in so that it'll be behave on the, you know, on the onset? <laughs> yeah. Well, I try to I try to wind it up up the base so that the dull side is facing me. Um, and usually when you start winding, it flips over and the shiny side goes down. But you, sometimes you just have to back it off and twist it and manipulate with it and force it to go the way you want to. There's no, <laughs> there's, it sometimes hackle just has a mind of its own and there's, and there's no way to fix it. Um, it's perfectly all right to have your hackle wound shiny side down too. Tim Flagler and I like the looks of it shiny side up. We think it looks better. But if it goes the other way, it's not the end of the world and the fly is still going to fish fine. Okay. Any other, qu any other questions? Uh, none at the moment. I'll pop on. Okay. All right. So I've tied that off and then I'm going to just pull that, pull that uh, head back and come around to the, the eye, take a couple turns and then just whip finish under that foam head. You can usually sneak your whip finisher in there pretty easily. Trim it off. And now I'm going to raise, raise the camera a little bit. So now all you do is pull straight up on that, on that post and trim it off, I don't know, just a short ways up and pull on it a little bit. And you need sharp scissors and you need one quick cut. <laughs> and what that leaves you with is... And this is why I use egg, egg yarn, because I get that nice ball. And now I've got a big indicator on the top there. If I used um, polypropylene or EP fiber or something like that, you don't get that nice round post. Egg yarn uh, really works better for that. And then um, finally, if you want, you can just maybe trim the body up a little bit so that it's not not those hairs aren't sticking up as much and if you have any hackle fibers that aren't going the right way you can trim those but i actually got lucky and uh, everything looks pretty good there so you can see now that that sticks up a bit and um and it's a pretty broad profile so that gives you a really really nice indicator for fishing this uh, low floating dark fly. And I don't, you know, when the fish see it from below, they don't see much of that. They see almost nothing. They see the body and the legs. And, you know, if you wanted to get really fancy, you could trim that parachute hackle in front and back so you just had legs sticking out the sides. Uh, but I don't, I don't bother with that. But you could if you wanted to. So anyway, um, that's, the, uh, that's the parachute beetle. And um, it's durable, floats well, and you can see it. It's uh, all you can ask uh, out of a dry fly. And it catches fish, of course. That's important. So, more questions? We had a couple questions. We had a question. Um, I think Jacob was suggesting that he, he would just said in case folks didn't hear it, but it was helpful for her them when you get to the parachute steps to do it vertically instead of doing it horizontally but i think that's what he's asking or just maybe yeah sometimes i do that sometimes i'll turn the i'll turn the vice sideways mm -hmm. 
and and I'll wrap I'll wrap the hackle uh, vertically. Um, it depends on how it depends on uh, how the hackle is behaving or not behaving. Um, this one this one seemed to be okay to to wind vertically, but yeah, you could turn it sideways and you could Got it. you could turn it sideways and do it. Yep. Uh, and we had a couple questions about how you fish it. So uh, Tobias had asked, do you strip or hand twist these beetles or do you fish them dead drift? And then dead drift, dead drift, okay. dead drift. Be beetles don't swim. Um, and, um, you know, they twitch a little bit when they're in the water. Usually they don't. Usually they, they just kind of are immobile because they're in shock. Mm -hmm. um, and any twitch that they make, you can't really duplicate with your rod tip because your movements are too overt. So dead drift. Okay. Yeah. Although I have caught fish on beetles that were dragging. God knows you know, why the <laughs> fish took it, but you know, it'll happen. It'll happen. Okay, it, let's see. What, what Adrian asked, would you use a longer post or would that affect castability? Wouldn't affect castability, but it, it would stick up a little too much and the fish might see it. Not that that might not matter, but that seems that. That amount, um, whoops, it's out of focus. That amount seems to be seems to be adequate. It seems you know it, it'll show up from quite a ways away. But you could, yeah, you could make it longer if you wanted. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You could do anything you want. <laughs> You can do anything you want with these flies. This is just my pattern. You can make your own pattern. Let's see what other questions we have here. Oh, yeah. Um, I think there's confusion uh, about parachute hackle. Parachute hackle is not, a, is not a different kind of hackle. It's just the way you wind the hackle. So you're winding it horizontally around a post instead of around the shank of the hook that that's all so it gives you a different look gives you a different gives your flies a different profile um, makes them land a little lighter and makes the body uh, float in the surface film a little bit more but it's it's uh, just standard hackle that you wind around the post and usually um, saddle hackle works best it behaves better when you if you can find the right size saddle hackle um, to wind around the post but as Jacob says, every feather is different. And he's absolutely right. Yeah, you could, again, you could reposition the hook and then do it vertically. That's, that, that'll that work just fine. Uh, nice, easy tie. Yeah, Ed, all my flies, all my patterns are easy to tie. <laughs> The yarn that I'm using, Joe, is egg yarn. Um, if you go to a fly shop or you go to the Orvis site or any place and just uh, egg yarn, you might see it called egg yarn. You might see it called uh, McFly foam is a type of egg yarn, um, but it's a, it's a very soft, uh, compressible yarn. It's used for making egg imitations usually for, for um, steelhead and, and salmon flies. The nice... The nice thing about it is that it comes in these bright colors because salmon and trout eggs are kind of a bright orange. Uh, so it comes in nice, uh, nice bright colors, which makes it great for a, for an indicator. Ever fish at night with beetles? I fish in late evening with beetles. Uh, Jacob, I've actually seen, um, I remember, I've a couple times seeing uh, fireflies land in the water and I'd, I'd see this, you know, fireflies are beetles and I see a firefly land in the water and I'd see this blink, 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 and then whoo, and it was gone. So they, they do eat beetles. They do eat beetles after dark if they can see them. Uh, usually, you know, usually late evening, just before it's fully dark, um, they can work. And yeah, you could try some some glow in the dark uh, polypropylene yarn. Although 
it's, you know, at, at 30 feet, I don't know how visible that glow in the dark yarn is. I don't know if it would help you see it much at all. Uh, you're better off just pitching the fly out there and, and, and fishing by sound. Wait until you hear something, hear something rise. Uh, Mike, and this particular fly on dry flies, tying in by the tip does not work very well. It does it with, uh, with wet flies, but um, no, I, I wouldn't tie it in by the tip. Although I've never, I don't know if I've tried it on a dry fly. Maybe I should try it sometime. <laughs> but uh, everybody that I know ties dry fly hackle in by the, by the butt, by the stem. Is there any way to tell the density of fibers on a saddle? I've had some that are surprisingly sparse. Yeah, Dan, if you buy it by mail or, or over the internet, it is difficult. But um, what you can do um, if you're in a fly shop is to just uh, take take the hackle out of the package and just flare it and 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 take a look at the density. You know, you want you want fibers as dense as possible and nice evenly spaced. Um, and, and you can usually eyeball it, you can usually tell. Um, and then look for a thin stem. Of course, most saddle hackles have thin stems, but if you just take it out of the package and, and flare the hackle, you'll be able to see how dense those fibers are. That's the only way I know of, of telling is to, is to look at it. And if a fly shop doesn't let you take a hackle out of the package to examine it, uh, go somewhere else because the only way to the only way to really buy hackle is to is to take it out of the package and look at it and, and see see how how dense it is and how thick the stem is. And you pay a lot of money for a hackle cape, so um, you know you want to look you want to look it over before you buy it. Would this be a good imitation for the Brood X cicada? I don't know. Probably in a bigger size it might, but there's better. I I assume there's better cicada pattern. Cicada, chicada. <laughs> K Daddy. <laughs> uh, uh, there's probably better invitations for that. Just wanted to point this pattern would be made into an ex and easily with extra thread wraps. Yeah, you could. Yep, you could do that, Jacob. You could definitely uh, you could definitely do a, a first uh, a first wrap in the middle and then a second wrap on the thorax and turn it into an ant. I would make the uh, foam part a little bit smaller than the hook gap because ants are a little skinnier usually. But yeah, you could do that. Yep. Sounds like a good idea. I think I might try it. All right. Any other questions about beetles, tying beetles, fishing beetles? Saddles are preferred over capes. Alex, uh, they're they're easier to to deal with when you're winding parachute hackle. They have thinner stems. Saddles generally have denser hackle fibers, and they behave um, uh, better uh, when you're tying parachutes. You can't always get saddle hackles in the right size or color, um, but if, if you can, um, they're they're probably better. Yeah, I tied my first one of these when I was practicing them over the weekend with. Um, with a natural black hackle cape that I have, and I didn't like it. The fiber density wasn't enough, and I found this uh, black saddle hackle, which was which was perfect for it. Any any other questions? It's almost five o'clock. Wow! And thank you everyone for uh, for being patient and, and coming in later today. Um, and thank you for um, thank you for your great questions. Those are some really good questions, and made me think about some things. Um, we don't we do not have uh, a fly tying next week. It's uh, Monday's Memorial Day, and Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday next week, I'm going fishing, taking some time off. Uh, so we'll be back in two weeks with uh, the Tom versus Tim tie-off. It's going to be a, a sulfur emerger, and Tim picked it this time, so <coughs> I'm in big trouble. But I'm always in big trouble. I haven't beat Tim in a long time. Did that Tim Johnson brute fall to the beetle imitation? I don't know what that fish 
fell to. I didn't catch that one. I just I just have the painting. All right, everyone. Well, I, I hope I helped. Um, I hope I helped your tying and fishing. I hope I helped you on this journey a little bit and gave you some confidence to tie something a little bit different and to develop your own patterns. Um, appreciate, appreciate all of you coming in. And um, we will see you in two weeks. Get out there and do some fishing. The weather's good and the fish are biting everywhere but the bat and kill. So um, get out there and do some fishing. Thanks, everybody. Oh, one more question. What's your wall color? I'm remodeling. <laughs> I don't know. Let me, let me find out. Hey, sweetie. I don't remember. I'm sorry. Sorry, my wife doesn't remember. Uh, it's kind of a, <laughs> I don't know, kind of a reddish, reddish, purplish, brownish. I don't know what color it is. Anyways, you can see what color it is. But I'm sorry. I don't know what color it is. We did it a long time ago, and we probably don't have the paint cans around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> never know what kind of questions you're going to get here <laughs> all right everyone thanks very much and uh, we'll see you soon